How are you now and thanks for joining us. Just going to do a really quick run through of some of the ideas that I've been having lately, uh, sort of where the market's going and also, uh, as I was put, I was asked to put together, an overview of the best ETFs that I think would probably survive 2023. So this is the ones that have got the most likely outcome. Now I think that 2023 is going to be choppy to start off with. I think you're selling your tops and you're buying your dips and just maintain that range through it. You've got to be active and you've got to be pretty, pretty savvy and you've got to be smart the way you do it. Listen to some good advice if you can find it, wherever you can find it. What we're going to look at now is just ETFs that I'm pretty sure that you can just hold for the most part, buy it on dips, sell it on tops, but just hold them. They're going to be pretty stable throughout the year. They will probably have a better chance of going up than down. So that's that's the key on this one. So just sort of pay attention to that. Now I put this in Stockhead. So this is sort of going to be linking to, to the Stockhead article, which I'm asked to write uh, once a week. And I'm just going to bring it across here now. So let's see if I can just do that and just do that. And then I'm going to do that. There you go. Okay, so here's the Stockhead article uh, right in front of you. Now, um, first off, yeah, I'm talking about easy stuff. I think the VIX, you know, if you sell when the VIX goes below 20 and you buy the market when the VIX goes above 30, you're going to do pretty well. I've been talking about this for a few weeks now. Last night, well, the VIX went below 20 a couple of nights ago. Last night it did start to come off. Um, Mike Wilson from Morgan Stanley did say that uh, the property was going to come off. However, look, let's move on. Don't worry about that. And I've already talked about these things in, in previous videos. Go and check them out if you want. Now, first off, you need to have a bond portfolio. I strongly believe that you do. The three that I'm recommending is USTB, VAF, and CRED. So I'm just going to move over here. So uh, VAF is, is one that I actually really like. So I'm in the Interactive Brokers platform right now. I'm just going to pull up a chart. I know that there's not a lot to be gained from a chart, except for the fact that you can sort of see that it has turned around from being in an ordinary state. Now, VAF, first off, is a, the Vanguard Australian Fixed in Interest Index ETF. That gives you um, some government tre treasury, semi-government bonds, and also investment-grade corporations. Vanguard put it together so it's cheap. Uh, you can see that it's, it's come up quite well. Because it's got not completely government, it's actually the yielding a little bit higher. That's going pretty well. Right there, actually, it sort of looks like it's, it's found a short-term top. Might look to ease a little bit off there and buy some more if it gets on the back foot. Um, RBA decision today, going to affect it, the, the direction that was, but also the notes out of the RBA. I'll save that for a different video. That's a whole different situation. USTB is the one that I have for people to get access to what's happening in the US. So this is run, it's run by Global X. Very simply, it's sort of, I think it's in that six or seven year duration area, coming off a bit today because of what happened overnight. Um, people sort of going leaning uh, a little bit away from the bond market uh, overnight but the, uh, uh, the, the, the something like this does give you its currency hedged as well which is fantastic um, and it'll be uh, it's it's paying you a small amount well, it's, it's not a massive amount it's more than more than you got paid of, of, over the last few years but it's okay but it's just a good way of adding to that 60 40 portfolio I think that the capital appreciation not worrying about the dividend or sorry the distribution or whatever this is too much but if you look at the capital appreciation I'll just chuck my face back in here um, if you look at the capital appreciation that you're going to get from buying a bond ETF that sort of moves in a, in a variable way, as yields do come off or they seem to come off next year, the bond, um, the bond price underneath is going to rise. So you're going to, the capital appreciation that you're going to get from owning these ETFs, I think will, pro will, will outweigh anything that you really want to do with the dividend. If they stay flat, you're still going to collect some money, which is okay. Every central bank in the world has said that that's about, well, sorry, every main one that we have to deal with. Is, has said that this should be about the top of their, their rate rise cycle. That's about as, as big as it's going to get. So from there, you're sort of taking it where it is. You can lock in some income, and as yields start to come down, then you're going to be able to get that capital appreciation as well. In a choppity market, choppity? In a choppity market, that's, uh, that's, better, than, uh, that's better than nothing, and it's better than owning equities that, that, that are more likely to go down. It's better than owning equities that are more likely to go sideways as well. So... Uh, exit me, go back to to the chart. Uh, cred. Now, credit is important. Um, now, first off, it's going to yield a little bit higher, probably a lot higher actually, but this is corporate bonds. So, again, sort of looks a little bit toppy here. Might have a look at, at shaving a little bit off just into the close today. But, now this is corporate um, corporate bonds um, under the cred run by beta shares. It uh, is global companies that simply just have their bond issuance in the Australian market. So that's uh, it, it just gives you a good way to do it. So they're not all Australian companies. I think that higher, um, higher now this is um, a high quality uh, 
co- companies. So it's um, investment grade corporate bonds, uh, and like I said, they're listed in Australia. Senior fixed rate. Um, they're not always Australian companies, as I said. So it does yield higher. Now I think that investment grade is going to do better because if the economy is a little bit shaky, then it's not going to impact investment grade. And also, if rates do stay at this high level or even potentially do go up, don't forget that's still a, uh, something that to, to 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 think about. If they if they do stay at that area, then then high grade companies will be less affected than the small stuff. We've seen what happens to the to the hot stuff when the interest rates go up. Um, that's not where you want to be. So if they do stay high and there is a little bit of a uh, little bit of a pullback in the economy, investment grade is going to go better. Um, that's the basis of that uh, that story there as well. Now back on this one. Now the overseas exposure is very cool. I've got um, first off, so local exposure. I want to do first the Aussie ASX 200 ETF. Now this one already looks like it's already run. So IOZ is my pick for this. I don't want to go equal weighted. I want to go index weighted because I want to own BHP, I want to own Rio, I want to own the banks. This is already looking like it's, it's starting to roll over. Again, this is one of the ones you want to have set so that you can buy uh, on the back foot for, for, for this one. So this, uh, yeah, so, so so keep your eye on this one. It's 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 very simply, it's our index. It's, it's, it's our index, not equal weighted. So you're going to be overweight on BHP and the banks um, versus an equal weighted in, uh, ETF. That's really where I want to be. So that putting, not putting it any more complex than that, that's that's pretty much the, the box and dice of it. The other one that I want is the F100. So F100 is again by BetaShares. They're a you know, very cool ETF provider. But have a look at the way that this has run um, lately. The flow of money that's gone into this ETF has been pretty, in, uh, it's been pretty good to follow what's going on in, in European markets. Now this is companies that are listed on the LSE. Just because they're listed on the LSE doesn't make them, you know, they only deal in Britain. These are Europe. These are the biggest European companies in the world. Um, let's talk about it. The biggest sectors: energy, staples, financials. The biggest and most dependable companies in Europe. We're talking Shell, AstraZeneca, Unilever, HSBC, BP. We're talking about those biggest holdings. So there's some big chunky companies. Not amazingly ESG friendly. I just named a lot of things that you might not want to have in your portfolio there. However, if you can. Um, disregard that or if you're just more interested in just going straight to the bottom line and just getting involved in it then uh, then the F100 is probably going to be for you I think that Europe does have this um, continue this big turnaround as you know they're going to be rolling out of their winter again and also the the, just the the fair valuations of Europe versus the US are definitely um, more favorable I think that um, the cyclical nature of things over there does mean that they'll that they'll do well as well um, and the flow of money with the the Ukrainian war will start to well not ease but I suppose that 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 pressure will pressure will change that the, the, the idea and the atmosphere in Europe will change that's probably a, a whole different interview in a podcast so I was just going to run through some of these ETFs that I really liked here too now finally there's two um, that I've got which is a little bit more for your growth and a bit more for your fun stuff one is a silver ETF called ETP MAG and the other one is a copper miners ETF that was just launched by Global X. So we've got ETP Mag, and that's the Global X Physical Silver ETF. This one here is very cool. You can see that silver has been trending up lately. There's the, the, the really basic simple thing for that, very similar to gold. If rates do come off, if the US dollar does come off over in the States, then those things should go okay. Um, silver has got a lot more runway to go up than gold does, I believe. So pay attention to that. Now, Wire is the other name of the ETF that does the copper miners over in the States. Um, this one is new, so the, the chart's not going to tell you much. I'm probably not, not even knowing why to show it. But it's just global copper miners and Australian copper miners as well. Um, it's a great way of getting involved in it. It's probably the best way of getting involved in a in the decarbonization of the world is what people are saying too. I can't talk about copper enough. I've mentioned it many times, but it's the best way to, to, to transfer electricity um, it's, and it is required for everything that happens in that space as well. China reopening is going to be requiring a lot of copper. As, look, there's a thousand things that are written about it. I don't need to go on about it again. Copper miners are cheap. They're cashed up. Um, they're fantastic. We need copper. We don't have enough copper in the world. So, shifting out of that. Now, look, that's Oh, yeah, there was this other little chart that I wanted to throw up here as well. This one here, and there's a, the quote, Cressat Capital. 
um, these guys here. Check them out. They do some really smart thing. Yes, they are super bullish on, on silver, super bullish on, on miners as well. Uh, there's a reason for that. They've just the commodity cycle is just at a massive uh, at a massive base compared to the market. If you want to uh, get a little bit of activity into that, would be a smart way to diversify. But they they mentioned on silver. So look, this is this is in October. The last time silver went up as much as today, this was in the end of October, was in November 2008. That was at the bottom, and silver went up 400 percent in the next two and a half years. So. Silver is, is a fairly easy one to see when there is a flow of money that goes into it, and the flow of money usually does mean something as well. So look, there's lots of other stuff that's in there that, that, that I like. Have a check out of the Stockhead article. I go into a little bit more detail onto, onto what it was that I say. But for now, look, that's just a really easy wrap of what I think a really good solid holding of, of ETFs will do for 2023. Buy it on dips. Don't be going and charging in now. Really simple technicals. Keep an eye on that VIX as well. For your entry and edge and entry and exit signals too. Um, don't be entering any market when the VIX is down in that 20 area, and don't be exiting any market when the VIX is um, up above that in that 30 area too, because you're going to be selling the lows and you're going to be buying the highs. So just take it easy on that. Look, that's it for me. I hope this helps, and uh, and I'll talk to you later on. Have yourself a good afternoon.